Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'll try a different approach. <laughs> it's good to have you here this morning. I just feel like we're all just kind of like thawing out and it's kind of like, you know, a little nippy out there today. Glad that you were able to come to church to worship the Lord and to be in fellowship with your brothers and sisters. It's a good day uh, when we're together like that. I have uh, an announcement and then there are a couple of people that are going to make some other announcements. So let me share the first announcement. You, in your bulletin, you had two inserts. This little one is about a charge conference that's been called for the purpose of electing individuals to fill remaining slots uh, on First Church's trustees and staff parish relations committee. Uh, we used to do that just by an enabling motion that was made at a ch uh, church conference, which we had back in October. And then this year, that wasn't available anymore, so we have to go the official route of a, of a church conference. So a church conference is different than charge conference. Uh, a charge conference is mainly made up of the... Well, once was called the administrative council that we call it leadership team but for elections it needs to be church council so you're all invited to come out on um, January the 23rd at 7 in the evening and uh, cast a vote for a slate of off a couple of officers that will be elected and then go home and the leadership team can stay and do their business so just but I need you to know make that announcement uh, this morning here from the pulpit and you have it printed from in the bulletin it'll be in next week's bulletin as well so um, you're invited to come and be part of that church conference Pam Reed has an announcement that she is going to make uh, this morning thanks Pam good morning good morning this coming Saturday is the first Women's Connect for the year 2024. Each month we get together, it's usually the third Saturday of the month, and we meet from 9 to 10.30. We usually meet in the Women's Connect, or the um, cafe out here, uh, but sometimes we meet at someone's house. This coming Saturday at 9 o'clock, we will be having a discussion and it is going to be the New Year puzzle, inviting God to put the pieces together. And I would like to personally invite all of you women, bring your daughter, your friend, your mother, anyone is welcome, anyone and everyone. And you do not need to be part of this church. You can bring friends from outside the church. We would love to have you, hope to see you there. Thank you, Pam, and Doug Harbach. <laughs> we had a lesson on enunciation just before we came here this morning, so I'm putting it into practice. He, he did, I also told him I needed to make an announcement, and he kind of rolled his eyes and said, oh, boy, I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen here. here so, <clears throat> are you all awake? Yes. You are, good. I'm going to test that. I'm going to take you back to your high school days, okay? <clears throat> you ready for this? <clears throat> you repeat, you know what to do. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. o. Give me a U. U. Give me a P. P. What's it spell? Soup. Soup. What's it spell? <laughs> What's it mean? I don't you don't know. I'll tell you what it means. We're having a soup sale. The Faith and Fellowship class is having a soup sale. And when you buy soup, or in your uh, bulletin you'll see this, any of our barbecue or our baked goods, you are giving charitably because of the money that is going to be used exclusively for both Ryan Sanchez and other FUMC mission projects. So I urge you, and it's great for the wintertime, get some soup and the other things that go with it. At the event, we'll also have some gift baskets so when you come in and um, buy some soup, then we're going to pull the rest of your money out of your wallet for charity and you can buy some things. So that's it. This is on your flyer. Fill it out. Get it back to one of our Faith and Fellowship members, such as Randy Culler, and place your order. Thanks. Well, it's really hard to follow that enthusiasm. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. 
Okay, those are the announcements. What a good way to get started. I invite you to stand, if you're able, with me for our call to worship. Oh, have a seat. Uh, let's, let's prepare ourselves to worship as we listen to the prelude. Sorry.
If you're able, I invite you to stand with me for our call to worship. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You are so wonderful. I know that I well. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is their sum. Lord, we would pray this morning that you would inspire us with hope and praise. Um, Inspired with hope so that we can go forward into the the task that you've placed before us to bring the world to you in the way that we live and the example that we set and the reflection of God's glory in our life in so many different ways. Um, Lord, we pray today that you would inspire us, that you would renew our hope. Uh, and that uh, you would uh, use us uh, as your chosen people. We pray this uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning we celebrate uh, Christ's presence with us. Every time we gather to worship, we celebrate his presence because in his presence there is peace. So I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. Let's share it with our neighbors this morning. Good morning. Yeah. Okay, good morning. It's time for our children's message. I know I'm short two of my own kiddos. Is there any brave little ones that want to join me up here? Oh, it's tough being the big sister, Ava. I know. I think maybe she had to go back to get her baby. That's why. 
Here she comes. Good morning, Emily. It's so happy to see such cheerful um, little ones here with me. I'm glad that you guys are feeling good today. Um, oh, okay. So I know if your brother was up here, he could answer this question for me, or if Micaiah was here. But maybe, maybe you could surprise me. Have you ever heard of the phrase, just do it? It's, fr it's, a, it's from a commercial, it's from a brand, a sneaker. Okay, well, I'll just tell you. It's from the Nike company. They make a, a shoe. And you've probably heard it, maybe, on the TV a time or two. Um, it started a, an ad in 1987 as a way to market their brand and inspire athletes of every level to push themselves to keep going and do the hard work, to put in the training. But I guess you won't be surprised when I say that those words um, weren't original, that the Bible said it first. Okay, Paul wrote those uh, words in a letter to the churches in Galatia thousands of years ago saying when you can do good to everyone just do it in other words when you have the opportunity to help to share to show love to others don't just sit there do it <clears throat> when we love God okay and we talked about this last week when we love God then we love others too we have it in us there's something Deep inside of us, if we love God and God loves us, there's something in us to love others. But the world gets in the way. It distracts us. It tries to make us forget. And sometimes we need tools. We need things to help us remember. Something like Natalie and Max and armor. <laughs> Sorry, I also help with the youth. Anyway, so we need to write these words down. Just do it on an index card or maybe tape it somewhere. And as you look at it, you can read these words out loud and ask God to help you. For, for us, we need to remember to share what we have with others and remember to, even when we're in a stinky mood, even when we don't feel good, and even when the world's telling us to just give a big frown to everybody around us, we need to remember to smile. Because when God, when Jesus is in us, when we say we love Jesus, then we love others too, no matter what. We just love. We just do it, okay? So let's pray. God, we love you. And it's in us to just love everybody else, too. I mean, we just can't help it. We want to. But sometimes the world just gets in the way. And it wants to distract us. It wants us to make us think that it's okay to be grumpy to other people. But we love you, God. And we love others. So help us this week to give a smile to those around us, to share what we have, and to show others that we love them because we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you. Go back to your seats and have a wonderful week. Thank you, Brianna. Let's come to God in prayer. Lord, all of us do need to be reminded that we just need to do it. We just need to do what you call us to do and to live the way you call us to live and to love the way you demonstrated for us what love is like. Um, Lord, help us to put those, those things into practice in our own um, living uh, today. Uh, as we are in this moment together in your house, we give you thanks for your blessing in our life as we... Um, continue through the beginning of a new year. We pray, Lord, you continue to focus our attention upon you and upon uh, 
the needs of others around us so that we can demonstrate your presence in our life, not in a showy way or in a self-righteous way, but in a truly Christ-like manner that, that we might be your instruments, that we might be set apart in the sense that we're useful for your service. Um, we pray, Father, for um, the world in which we live because that is one of the services that we can employ for you uh, is to pray for the world, a world where there's such brokenness, a world where there's such a great need for hope, a world where there's a need for peace and reconciliation. Uh, we pray for our world in, in many areas uh, where there's conflict. We think about Israel. We pray for peace. We think about uh, Ukraine. We pray for peace. We, th we pray, Father, for other places in the Middle East, for Palestinians and other countries, we pray for peace, Lord. Uh, we pray, Father, for reconciliation and ways forward where there seems to be no way. We know that you can make a way. And so we ask that you would do that. We pray for our country. Uh, we pray, Lord, for our nation as we move through this year where there's elections. We pray, Father, for peace. Uh, we pray, Father, for uh, a desire to be united in all the very best ways. Uh, we pray, Father, for your hand to be on our country and to uh, help us to be the best that we can possibly be for each other, even those with whom we disagree. We need you, uh, Lord, so much. We always have and we always will. Help us to be reminded day after day of our need for you and let that be one of the driving forces that brings us to our knees in prayer. Um, that we could be faithfully serving you by praying for the needs we see around us. And we pray, Father, especially this morning for First United Methodist Church in Chambersburg. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry that this church has carried out for over 200 years. And we ask, Lord, that you would inspire us, that you would strengthen us, that you would use us uh, where we are in this community to make a difference for Christ and to touch people's lives with the gospel of Jesus so that their lives can be blessed by your love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness. We ask these things in Christ's name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, it says, In all your ways acknowledge God, and God will make straight your paths. One of the ways that we acknowledge God every week, hopefully, is in our giving, our acknowledgement of him, that he is the source of our life, the source of all we have, and we acknowledge that as we give out of uh, what we've received for his work. So as we come to the Lord this morning, let us present our tithes and offerings to him as an acknowledgement of his goodness and blessing in our life.
We acknowledge, O Lord, that everything that we have is given to us by you. We ask, Lord, that you'd bless these, our tithes and our offerings that we present to you as an acknowledgement of your grace and goodness to us. And use them for your purposes, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please remain standing for the reading of Scripture as Linda Pepernick comes forward to be our reader this morning. Reading from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 to 25. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, "Because be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, Live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, 
but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please be seated. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all that scripture has for us, especially, most especially, in revealing to us the living word, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, today that your word would find a home in our heart and that we would obey it and live it and find its blessings true in our daily living. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Be holy as I am holy. That's what the text says, and that seems impossible. Be holy because I am holy. Holiness is not a word to hear uh, used too much anymore, um, especially of ourselves. And yet, it's pretty clear in all of Scripture that it is God's intention that we be holy people. We have, you know, this image in our mind, maybe, maybe we have this image in our mind about what holiness looks like or the impression holiness has made on us or on other people if we're able to define it at all. You know, sometimes we uh, look at um, religious art and uh, like portraits of saints with hands clasped and looking up sideways into heaven and there's an aura around them and we think, oh, that's what holiness looks like, you know. Um, or maybe we, when we think of holiness, maybe we think about people that we've known that just tried a little too hard and some of the wrong ways to try to impress people with themselves being holy. You know, holiness is not about... Uh, about an image. Uh, holiness is not about um, casting an impression uh, from outward appearance. Um, scriptures make it clear that holiness is something that lies inward and is lived out in, in our life. You know, we have certain holy things, like um, this is our sanctuary, and the idea... The word sanctuary comes from that which is sacred, which has to do with what's holy. And so, you know, in the, New, in the Old Testament, there were certain things that were present in the temple that were set apart that were uh, by nature called holy, and people were to honor that as such. Um, and we honor this as another word that's been used in recent years is a sacred, sacred space. Um, that idea is really gets to, the, to get down to the, the nub of the idea, it is something that's set apart for God's purpose. So that's what, we're gonna, that's what Peter's getting at, talking about here, when he's writing to these Christians, many of whom were Gentiles, and did not have necessarily the benefit of a background that, that would have um, focused upon this concept of holy. 
Um, certainly the Jewish culture uh, for early Christians gave that in spades, that you know, holiness was, was a, a big deal. In fact, the concept of holiness and how you were to live a holy life in terms of outward acts and rituals is one of the things that put people at odds with Jesus. Because Jesus didn't always do what was anticipated by others observing or what was expected uh, for someone who was living a holy life. You know, he got in trouble uh, because his disciples uh, ate some grain on a Sabbath and, and things like that. Ate with sinners. You weren't supposed to do that. So the idea of holiness from God's perspective and what human beings do with it can be very um, different. So if, when we look at this passage of Scripture, and, and as, as Peter moves into this thought about uh, holiness, as he had spoken just a, a paragraph before about hope, and we might think about this idea is that we've been chosen not only for hope, but today we might think about being chosen for holiness. One of the things he, he starts off by saying, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. And as I read that verse, it just impressed upon me that, that living rightly, living holy, begins with my mind and my heart. It begins with the way I think about myself and about where I am. And what my environment is. He, he says, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. And, th you know, I, that word alert kind of leaps off the page. Um, when I hear the word alert, I think of, you know, being aware, being uh, prepared. Um, aware of what's going on around me, what's going on in me, um, and, you know, ready to move. If It's tempting in these days to ignore some things that may upset or cause fear uh, when we listen to the news. Sometimes it, it's tempting to just want to not even bother uh, to engage, to, to learn. Um, but being alert, being aware of what's happening in our world in order that we can pray, as the Bible tells us, to pray unceasingly, uh, is something God calls us to do. It's, you know, being alert, ready to take action, to do what's necessary to help is important. Fully sober, meaning, you know, kind of emphasizing this whole idea. Uh, people who aren't sober are kind of, you know, they're back setting back on their heels. Uh, we're to be sober, alert, aware of what's going on, on around us. Uh, Marcus Aurelius, who was a um, Roman emperor from 161 to 180 AD, was a Stoic philosopher and really no friend of Christianity, and yet he had some life insights. One of his... Um, quotes that is a favorite of mine is the first rule is to keep an untroubled spirit the second is to look things in the face and know them for what they are and I think that's pretty much what Paul what Peter is saying here in this verse that we need to stay on not have an untroubled spirit have the peace of in, in a Christian way to understand that is to have the peace of Christ ruling in us but also to not be afraid of the reality of things, to look things in the face and know them for what we are, to be sober, to be alert. Because, as Peter goes on to say, um, to set your hope on the grace that's going to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Set your hope. So in the light of things that might causes fear or concern we have hope because our hope has been set uh, upon Christ the grace that's going to be ours when Jesus comes back you know knowing what lies ahead of us in eternity beyond this life really 
has the power to change the way we live in this world. Um, people who aren't afraid of what death will bring, we might not in, in, relish the idea uh, or the process, but we know that beyond death there is something prepared for us that will be wonderful. And that can affect my, my confidence, my hope, my faith as I'm living in this world. You know, uh, we live with a sense of hope, not despair, because God doesn't abandon us. He set grace before us. And so Peter goes on to say, as obedient children, don't conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, be holy in all you do, for it is written, be holy because I'm holy. If we have this hope in Jesus, it changes the way that we live. We don't despair. Uh, we know that we're made for better things, and so if we're made for better things, we'll live in better ways in this world. We won't be stuck in the things that we used to be stuck in. We have something more to live for in this idea of living a holy life. There should be a clear distinction in our lives, uh, in a life with Christ and a life without Christ. And one of the ways that that distinction is seen is in this concept of living a holy life, of living a life that's set apart, a life that is different. Holiness, you know, can refer to being blameless and without sin, and, you know, that's something that we, we really have a hard time uh, wrapping our head around, that, you know, although Wesleyan theology talks a lot about sanctification, that's one of the distinctions of a Wesleyan theology is this idea that we are to live holy lives. And some of us try to kind of give up on it. But that's not what the Bible says. It says it's something we should aspire to. So to, to live our life above sin. But it also describes persons who see themselves as set apart uh, for God's service. In the Bible, sometimes Paul would start by saying uh, to the saints who are in Ephesus or someplace. He could say the very same thing to us. He could say to the saints who are at First Church in Chambersburg. And we'd say, who's he talking about? He's talking about you. He's talking about me. Because our holiness is not necessarily in our history of how we've behaved always. But our holiness, our saintliness comes because of what Christ has done in our life. And who we are in Christ. Um, and Paul, Peter goes on to, he refers to Leviticus 19, chapter 2, when he, sa he says, Be holy as I am holy. That's what God told the Old Testament uh, Jews to do. Um, true holiness is, does not consist in just keeping the law, but in obeying the Father. God calls us, called the Old Testament saints to holiness, calls us to live holy lives. Not holier than thou, not a smug attitude, not being prissy, not being Victorian. Uh, our lives ref are to reflect Jesus in our behavior and in our love for God and our love for others. And so Peter goes on and he says, look, since you're called, since you call on a father who judges each person's war work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. So it kind of goes from this idea of a holy life and maybe to the idea of how we can be inspired, how we can be thinking in such a way as to help us to make that happen for us. And one of the things that we might want to keep in our mind to be inspiring to us is that our Father, our Heavenly Father, has called, who, who judges us by what we do, um, you know, we need to try to live our life in a way that honors him. Um, the idea of fear, reverent fear here, isn't being afraid necessarily, but awe, having awe for God, having respect for God, having the sense of wanting to reverence him. It's interesting, one of the words that stuck out to me as I thought about that, okay, I'm, I'm called to be a holy, to live a holy life. Uh, I'm called to live a, a differently in this world. I'm called to be set apart. I'm called to be obedient. And then Peter adds this. I think to move us in another direction further, when he says, live out your time as foreigners here. 
and reverent fear. You know, so some people have taken that, you know, where is our origin? Where is our destination? To whom do we owe a sense of allegiance above all things? How am I a foreigner? How are we foreigners? Well, if we're set apart, if we're different, if we live contrasting lives to what surrounds us, we might be thought of or think of ourselves as foreigners. It would be good for people to say, Livermore is different. It's kind of strange. <laughs> but you know, I, I, it would be good for people to see Christ in me. And it would be good for you to say the same thing of yourself. That people would say of you. But they're different. There's something about her. There's something about him. That's different. And that difference is, is something that's appealing. And also something that is good. You know, that's part of our witness. Um, to, to live out our lives differently for Christ. That we stand out. For you know it was not with precious or with, it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from our ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. I'm, if I'm going to be different, it's not because I'm better. If I'm going to be different, it's going to be because it's going to be because Jesus is my Lord. It is going to be because I've trusted Christ. It is going to be because the cross is the defining marker in my life. Because it was at the cross that I was saved. It was at the cross that Jesus shed his blood for the forgiveness of my sins. And it was that sacrificial death and Jesus' subsequent resurrection that saves me. And that makes the difference. He was chosen before creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. And through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him so that your faith and hope are in God. Jesus was chosen for this purpose, came for this reason, to save us. There's that word again. Last week we were chosen. This week Christ has been chosen. But we are chosen to live holy lives, to be different. And the way that we do that is in verse 22 is by obeying the truth that we have with us and loving each other with a sincere love deeply from the heart. That kind of stuck out to me. You know, people throw the word love around all the time. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love that. Love you. You know, kind of like off the top, off the cuff. And Peter doesn't just, he doesn't stop and say, and love one another deep, and love one another, period. He says, love one another deeply from the heart. He's saying, let your love really matter. Let it cost you something. Let it be something that you're totally committed to because you're born again. Uh, you know, not with perishable stuff, but with imperishable, with the word of God. We are different because we're loved by God and we know it. And we are trying to obey that. We're trying to make it true in our life in the way that we love from the heart. And that's only possible because of God, because of the love that we received while we were still sinners, that Christ would die for us, and we are born again to a new way of living filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he adds this last verse. For all people are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. I thought about this in a whole different way when I read that preparing for this message, that we're nothing without God. We have no strength in ourselves. We have, we have no endurance to persevere. But with the, God's word living in us, with the living word Jesus Christ living in us, the enduring word living in us, it is possible. Not in my strength, but through the word of God living in me because of Jesus to be different, to live different, to truly tr strive towards being set apart, holy unto the Lord. 
Lord, help us all to realize that you call us to holiness not to muster up our, se- our willpower or anything else, but to rely upon you and you only to do what only you can do for your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together, please. This week ahead of us, let's go understanding that holiness isn't some kind of pious thing way off in the distance, but holiness in our life is, is, uh, you know, is something that we're to be striving for and can experience by taking some time, like the hymn we just sang tells us, and doing these things, placing ourselves before the Lord. It's not about that's not what's going to make us holy necessarily, but that's what's going to put us in a place where we're more yielded, submitted open to the Lord's work in our life. So go into this week with the blessing of knowing that God has called you for bigger, better, holier things. And he wants to shine his light through you in your life. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.